You know, I miss seeing y'all every day. I'm just saying. That we miss, we miss you too. I see Yolanda all the time. I'm gonna miss you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to our webinar. Uh, we do have a Q&A, so feel free to drop, drop your questions in there. Uh, you will be muted throughout the webinar, but uh, we will be sure to answer all your questions and direct those to the panelists. We were just saying how much we miss y'all, so we're excited to chat with y'all today. Um, and it's going to be good. Good morning again to everyone who uh, just joined us. We are really excited to speak with you all today. We will start momentarily. If you do have any questions for any of our panelists, or um, even if it's not necessarily for one of the panelists that you see, feel free to drop those in the Q&A and we will answer those throughout the webinar. All right, everyone, we'll take 
uh, about 30 more seconds to let everyone come in the room and then we will get started. We see a few questions in the chat already. So um, some of these we will answer live. So if uh, you see your question and it says we'll answer live, then we'll talk about that. Other questions uh, we'll answer in the chat or we may direct you to an email account for you to get that question answered. All right, Dr. Buller, are we ready? Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks so much for joining us. I am here with a stellar set of uh, faculty and staff uh, to help us sort of talk through uh, where we are in terms of our plan for this fall. Uh, we are so excited to see each of you all, uh, though it be virtually, um, and we can't wait for you to be here. Uh, we are uh, going to start this morning with, uh, I'll start with just a few comments, um, but before I do that, I wanted to just introduce um, our panel, um, and I'll do them as I see them on my screen. So um, our moderator is Dr. Cordy Williams. You guys know Dr. Cordy from the Union. Um, to my right uh, on my screen is Dr. Saylor, who is our Dean of Students and Assistant Vice President. Um, uh, on my um, the other part of my family, part of my family here is uh, Mrs. Yolanda Brent, who is the director of um, uh, campus dining, and then uh, Miss Michelle Matthew, that you all all know, um, and she will um, have comments around auxiliary services pieces. And then Dr. Jonathan Wright, as you know, is our director of the Center for Career and Professional Development. And so um, these uh, kind of folks take uh, taken. Uh, time out of their COVID schedule to uh, meet with us today and to talk through uh, any plans that we have for the fall and answer any questions that you may have. The Division of Student Success will hold uh, each of these Zooms every Friday at noon uh, from now until uh, you all tell us you don't want to do them anymore um, because we really do want you to have an opportunity to hear the latest and greatest. Uh, as you all know, each week we've had changes in um, how, um, how, uh, how our plans are being laid out for the fall. And so I thought it would be uh, appropriate that each Friday you would get the latest and greatest uh, on that on the Friday sort of heading into the next week. And so uh, again, we will do these each Friday at noon. If you know someone who would like to be connected to these, uh, please do uh, send them the link. Additionally, uh, Dr. Courtney will get these out for you all to review because we are recording today's session as well. Okay. Um, with that being said, I just want to make a couple of quick uh, brief comments and then I'm going to um, allow our, our, um, our panel um, to, to, say a, to say a couple of words about the areas of, of their oversight. Um, first of all, um, I want to say thank you to the students who uh, served on the fall 2020 uh, return to campus uh, uh, committee. Um, that was a really heavy lift. Um, as you can tell, uh, like Dr. Kimbrough says, this is a moving target. And so what these students were able to do is to bring your voices to the, uh, to the, to the, to the subcommittee and let us know how best we can serve you as we move forward. And so I really do want to thank um, each one of those students. And I won't uh, call them all by name because I'll miss somebody but they are listed in the, I think page 16 or 17 of the uh, COVID plan. And so you can see who those students are and continue to reach out to them because they are now a part of the implementation uh, plan. So what, now that we, we have a plan, what kinds of things do we need to do to ensure that we stay uh, up to date on the latest and greatest? So I do wanna thank each of those students. Um, Somebody asked, and we were on an academic session, and some of you all may have been on the academic session yesterday, and some folks have asked, why are we, why are we planning for face-to-face? -face? Why, why are we doing that? Um, and um, I wanted to tell you that the reason why we landed on uh, what is uh, considered high, a hybrid uh, uh, modality for coming back to school this fall is that we did a survey and many of you participated in that survey and we heard overwhelmingly that um, the campus of uh, uh, stakeholders, students, faculty, staff, um, everybody really wanted to be back together 
um, this fall if we could pull it off safely. And so what you're seeing is our response to that. Um, are there people who will say, you know what, Dr. Bode, I really, I really can't do it. I, I really would feel safer if I was operating from home. Absolutely. Um, and so uh, one of your colleagues said to me the other day, she said, well, um, why are you forcing us to come back? And we're not, we're not, we're not forcing you to come back. We want you to be here. Uh, but if you say that this is something you'd rather do from doing in the online format, then please contact your um, faculty advisor, uh, contact your professors, contact Mr. Mitchell and say, hey, what classes are offered online and how does that match up with my uh, specific schedule so that I can stay on track as it relates to my matriculation here at Dillard? You have that option. You can do that. Um, and so we want you to know that that option is there. Uh, will every class that you need this fall be offered online? Maybe not. Um, but we do have a couple of different um, academic uh, consortium updates that we've done over the summer to try to meet that need. So even if you don't see the class in there as of today, keep checking with your, um, your folks. But you have to move forward to let somebody know that that's what you would like to do. Um, one of the, the other questions that folks have asked about is housing. And so why is it that we have folks that are now uh, stationed over at SUNO versus on the main campus. In order to accomplish the configuration for social distancing in the residence hall, we essentially had to cut the occupancy of uh, the residence hall in half. Um, that's probably the easiest way to say it. Um, and so everybody that was in a room with two beds now has one bed, or they will by the time you get here, have one bed in their room. And we wanted it to be that everybody has the ability to at night go in and close their own door and sleep in a space that's a bubble that says, hey, I'm the only person in this space um, at night. So I don't have to sleep with a mask on or I have this safe space that I can go to every night. And so everybody um, will have that same configuration. Now, there are a couple of spaces that uh, will um, be a little bit larger. And so some of you all may have known about the triples that we had. So it was spaces that had uh, enough space for three beds. Uh, we are allowing those to operate as doubles, but it's because they're so large. I mean, some of them, you can literally park a small car in them and they're pretty, pretty large rooms. And students who um, move into those spaces will have the ability to say, nope, I don't want to do this. And so the people who are in those spaces will have that ability to opt out of those spaces and move over to SUNO or into other spaces that may be available. Uh, but I did want you to know that that's the reason why the campus occupancy has essentially been cut in half. Now, for those of you all who are living out at um, Gentilly Gardens, as you know, you already have that ability to close a door and to have that you know, individual space. And so that's why the configuration for those spaces will stay the same. Okay, so Gentilly Gardens, uh, Southern University, New Orleans, and then our main campus, the, uh, the idea is that everybody will have the ability to close a door and to have their own personal space. So that's what that is. Now, what does that mean in real time in terms of having students to be over at the main camp, or over at SUNO? Um, odds are that you will, um, Odds are you will end up in a space, you may end up over at Southern University of New Orleans if you are one of the upperclassmen students who was not assigned to uh, Gentilly Gardens. That's, that's, the, that's the long and short of it. Um, what Ms. Lewis has been attempting to do is she's been attempting to, first of all, ensure that everybody has a room under the roof of Dillard. So whether it's at Suno, or on the main campus, that's been her first priority, okay? To make sure that everybody has a room, okay? Now, after she's assigned your room, I think the idea is, I'm gonna let Dr. Sell talk more about this. Um, after she's done that, then the conversation is, well, um, you know, Ms. Lewis, I really wanna stay with X person, or I do wanna do this or do that. She can have those conversations with you, and I don't think she minds that, but she also is managing 800, 900 assignments. And so you do have to give her some time to work through all of that. And so if you have individual questions, you can obviously email her. 
Um, will she get back to you in one hour? Probably not, okay? But she will do her best to return your call or return your email. And I would really uh, highly suggest that you email her so that she has you in a queue and she can take you as you're the next person in the queue, okay? So I'll allow folks to ask specific questions, but as of today, for today, we won't answer specific room questions, but general questions about housing, no problem, we can answer those um, as of today. Another thing I want to touch on is um, testing. Um, there was there's some conversation around testing. Now, um, in the initial plan, and this is again, this is why we are gonna do these every Friday because what we submitted out last Wednesday or whatever day that was, that was as of that day. As of today, we've had to make some adjustments to the testing protocol. The idea now will be that if you have the ability to get your tests done in your city, um, please do that before you leave to come here. Okay, that's what we're gonna ask you to do. Why are we asking you to do that? Number one, it will allow us to create a baseline for the people that are coming into the Dillard community. Okay, that's number one. Number two, what it'll allow us to do is to know, for you to know what your status is before you begin to travel. I think it's the responsible thing to do. So if you're gonna be flying, if you're gonna be um, on any type of public transportation, if you're gonna be driving and going different places around the city, you will wanna know what your status is before you start to move around, okay? So that's, that's number, number two. Finally, the idea here is, is that we really want people to start to take a personal responsibility for what's going on with their body, okay? So to that end, we're gonna ask each of you all to go to, um, uh, to Walmart or Target or someplace um, and to order yourself a personal thermometer, okay? So in the morning, when you wake up, we will want you to take your temperature, okay? and say, all right, if I feel feverish, if I have a fever, then I need to stay in my room, okay? Just because you have, let's be clear, because you have a fever doesn't mean that you are infected with COVID. That's not what that means. But it does give you some sense that you have some level of infection. It may just be a cold, okay? It may just be a cold, and that's okay. But we want you to take responsibility for this in the morning time. Why? Once you move outside of your room, then you have a higher chance, if you are infected, of moving around and infecting other people, okay? So that's why in touching things and touching the doors and going to the restrooms and doing all these kinds of things. And so we really want you to take this responsibility. And so, um, you know, one of the things that you guys may have seen is over the last couple of, uh, of, of weeks, is college students just basically saying, you know what, we're young, we can do whatever we want to do. And um, I think it's been in here in New Orleans, um, some students from around the area. And uh, as far out as Alabama, I've seen where students are having parties and doing these kinds of things and are saying, you know what, I don't care. We, we're just going to, we're going to do it. In fact, one party, they had it to see who could contract a virus. That was funny to somebody. Um, and we're saying, and we feel, and this is another reason why we're coming back, why we're, why we're uh, tracking to be back here this fall, we believe you all are mature enough to handle what it takes to be in this space. We believe that you'll be responsible enough to do what it takes to be in this space. And so the first part of that is, is getting up in the morning and doing a personal self-assessment to say, do I feel feverish? Do I have a sore throat? Do I... Uh, am I, am I uh, well enough to go out and to be among folks, all right? And so we do want you to do that. Now, that being said, I'm going to suggest, and we're going to suggest that you get that, um, get that uh, test before you get here. Now, Dr. Bullard, I cannot get the test. My town uh, does not have testing readily available. Um, what am I supposed to do? Will I be excluded from classes? No. However, once you get here, make full plan to be tested when, within a short order of the time that you get here, okay? Make plan to be tested. We're going to test everybody within a short period of time after being here. Right now, we're check, taking, uh, checking on these plans 
um, and in terms of testing, and they're expensive. Um, some tests are as much as $200 a person. And so we're all uh, uh, grown-ups here. We know what it means to test $200 a person times all students plus all faculty and staff. You do the math on that. Um, and so we're looking for options to try to do this. Additionally, we're looking for rapid testing. So we can't have you to come here and do testing on Monday and then it's two weeks later that you get your results, okay? So that's the other challenge that we're, we're up against. And so we're gonna do everything we can to get that testing done. So once you get here, that testing will be done in short order once you are here. But what we're asking you to do is take responsibility and see if you're able to get a test. Last thing I'll say about the testing piece is, once you are tested, you can't test, get a negative test and then go out on the town. That's not, that's, not a, that's not the way to do that, okay? You've got to test and then say, you know what? Uh, friends, mom, dad, whoever's trying to get you to go and do something, I got to stay in this bubble because I want to go back to Dillard infection free because I'm responsible to that community now. Does, does that make sense? Like I want to uh, test, get a negative test and then be prepared to go back. Uh, but you can't get that negative test and then say, okay, well, I'm good. Because candidly, you can get, you can get tested on Thursday, go out, um, and go around the town and be infected that Friday, and then you come back to school on Saturday. So it really is a touch and go situation um, right now. Um, the faculty, the staff, um, everybody who's here is going to have to be responsible to this idea that we're all responsible to each other. So when you get here, you're going to have to have a mask on everywhere you go. Okay, everywhere you go, you're going to have to have a mask on. Um, I think uh, somebody asked about this yesterday. I think we're going to be putting out some uh, some gift boxes that will have some masks for you and those kinds of things as sort of a welcome back uh, a gift. Um, but um, we what we do want you to do, though, know, is, is to get lots of masks that you have access to. Um, I ran out of the door the other day. I didn't have a mask on, um, and I was driving in my car, and I got about 10 miles away from home, and I had to turn all the way back home to get a mask because I knew that I'm not gonna be able to go into any establishment here. And here in New Orleans, um, Metairie, Kenner, all these places out here, they mandate that you have to have a mask on to access any place around. And so there's no difference on the Dillard University campus. So you might as well get into the idea that just like you have your cell phone or your keys, Anytime you move from your residence or move around, you'll need to have your mask in hand. And I'll just, I think I'm just going to start wearing it around my neck and that way I'll always have it no matter what I'm doing, even when I'm at home. So that's going to be my new thing. So um, those are the, those are the, the main comments that, that I have about sort of generally what uh, some of the questions that I've heard kind of leading into today. Um, if you other, have other questions, certainly um, drop them in the chat box. I'll start with um, Dr. Saylor and see if she has additional comments. Um, and for those of you all who don't know the folks on this uh, call, this will be a good opportunity to become acquainted with them. So Dr. Saylor. Hi, right. thank you, Dr. Bowler. Good morning, everyone. Um, hope you all are having a great summer um, considering the circumstances and looking forward to have you back. Um, we did a, a briefing a couple of days ago for our incoming students, and um, now that I realize there are some incoming students on this call as well as some returners, so I'm going to try to maybe truncate some of the information that we shared. Dr. Buller has touched on a, a lot already. Um, Dr. Courtney, is it possible for me to share my screen? Um, uh, yes. No. Yes. It is? Yeah. Yeah, making it happen <laughs> right now. I just think it'll be easier. Some, I, I know I'm a visual person, so someone's like just talks to me, it'll go over my head. All right, you should be able to do it now. Got it. Okay. All right, so I'm just going to roll through this really quick, you guys. I'm not trying to do a whole presentation, but I think it might be good um, for you all to um, 
to see kind of what we shared. Um, and you can kind of, if you need to screenshot this or whatever, that's no problem. Um, just want to share with you, we are making some transitions with regard to the professional staff. Those of you who knew Mr. Robinson, um, he's no longer with us, so we'll be replacing him. You'll, so you will see a new face. Um, for straight in Williams Hall. So just want you all to be aware of that. Um, so if you have not applied for housing yet, uh, we are still taking applications for housing, but understand it is extremely late. But please go ahead if you're still, if you're considering coming on board um, and being a part of the residential life community, um, please make sure that you apply for housing. Those of you who are returning students, please make sure that you complete the application for returners. One thing that we've seen um, where some returners may have said, well, I haven't gotten any confirmation. I filled out my application. I haven't gotten confirmation. Y'all received it or something like that. Well, what we've seen is that some returners have completed the application for new students. And and if you do that, it won't be directed in the right place. And so it will appear as though you did not submit an application. And once you do submit that application, of course, when you submit it, it will put you in line as far as when we received it. So please make sure that you are completing the correct application. Um, you do not need credentials to go to the application um, online at, in MyGU. Um, you don't have to log in, it's right there. So just ensure if you haven't done so already, make sure that you complete the application for returners. For new, the, what you see on the screen is for new students. And so if there are new students on here who have not completed your application, um, the only way you will be, you will get access to the link to complete your housing application is if you have submitted your $150 enrollment fee. So once you do that, then you will be um, supplied the link. So before that, though, you won't be able to, to use it. And again, that process happens through um, enrollment and admission. So just um, real quick about assignments. Um, just so you all know, the way housing assignments are done, whether it be for first year students or for returning students, is done in order in which the applications were received. So it's based on first come, first serve. If you are a new student, a first year student coming in, um, your placement in line is dependent upon one, us, re us receiving your housing application and you having your enrollment fee turned in. So sometimes I think there's some confusion where a, a new student may say, well, I, I have uh, submitted my intent to uh, enroll and I've submitted my $150 enrollment fee. I haven't gotten an assignment. Well, um, you have to actually turn in the housing application along with it. So what we've seen sometimes is let's say you turned in your 150 enrollment fee um, on April 1st, but if we didn't get your housing application until June 1st, the June 1st date is, is the date in which you will be put into the queue to receive your assignment. So both of those things have to be done. For our returners, as you all know, um, your, um, your deadline uh, came up on, uh, I believe it was April, yeah, around April 1st, April 15th. Um, I think you all received an email from housing in the first 45 minutes of the housing applications being open, 300 students had submitted their housing application. And that was great for us because what that was indicative of is that, hope, okay, students are saying they wanna come back, you know, because students won't fill out housing applications if they're not trying to come back. What it also though tells us is, is that, um, if you are saying, well, how come I didn't get this particular assignment and I turned my application in on the first day? Well, unless you may have turned your application in within the first 60 seconds, there may have been hundreds of people who may have gotten in right before you, depending on, you know, uh, web speed and, you know, your, your computer and how fast it moves. So just to be completely honest, within the first 45 minutes, we had over 300 applications that were submitted by returning students. So, um, and remember some, and there are some rooms that are limited. So, you know, it really was a, a race to the finish with regard to who came in first as far as who um, is in the queue and in line to get their assignment first. Um, 
there more than likely will be some type of wait list depending on um, you know how things go um, because we are still receiving housing applications um, as I just mentioned um, there is a possibility so as you can see here if you received your I mean if you submitted your housing application after May 1st um, you know we're Ms. Lewis is constantly trying to do her best to um, assign people, but again, we can only assign based on what we have. So if we don't have the space, we can't make an assignment. Um, so what we are doing though is putting people in um, by, and if you have been assigned, you should be able to see your, um, your building and you should be able to see your meal plan and you should be able to see your amount on your account. You should have that. So for clearance purposes, which is, which is the most important thing right now, we wanna make sure that you all get cleared so that way you can get your key when you show up. Um, so that's what we're doing right now. By the 23rd, you will get the specifics. So you will get your actual room number. And if you are one of those persons who will have a roommate or a suite, uh, well, really a roommate, you will know who that roommate is. We never typically um, give out suite mate information because that, you know, things could change as far as who's next door to you, who's sharing the other side of the room, um, the other side of the, the suite. However, you will find that out once you get on campus. So real quick, the room types. I saw some questions come up about the room types. So here's how this is done. Um, all of our first year students are going to be assigned to our traditional halls, Camphor, Hart, Soul, Strait, and Williams. Um, the, the way the rooms are going to be done is they're only going to be singles and doubles. And um, there will be no triples inside of the residence halls, in the, in the traditional halls. There will be no triples. So you should not see that available. Here's how they're being broken down. A single room. So if someone, you know, sent an application says, I want a single room. A single room is considered a room that has a private bedroom and a private bathroom. That means no, no space in your area will be shared by another individual. That's a single room. And that will be the room type where you will be charged a single rate. Okay, so if you requested a single room, you will, and, and you were in, the, in line to receive a single room, you're going to have a private bedroom and a private bathroom, and you will be charged the single rate. Single occupancy rooms is what Dr. Buller just talked about, which is it may have been a room that was a double that it, in, a, in its original um, stance, it was a double, but we have taken out one half of that room to so now it is only uh, being occupied by a single person. So I want you all to be sure to understand these are not single rooms. They're only being occupied by a single person. Um, you will have a private bedroom, but you will have a shared bathroom. So there will be someone on the other side of your bathroom where you will, you will indeed share a bathroom. So there is a shared space in some capacity. Those persons who are in single occupancy rooms will be charged the double rate. So what would be considered a double room? So I think I saw a question about will we be charged extra? No, there's no extra fee or no extra charge that you need to worry about coming up with because you will be charged a double rate, okay? The double occupancy room, these are the rooms that Dr. Buller mentioned that are the larger rooms. These may have been triples in their original format, but they're large enough to where two individuals could safely um, occupy that room. These individuals who are being put in the double rooms, and there are limited numbers, they're not a lot. They're, I mean, very, very limited numbers of these rooms. Um, the individuals who are being assigned to those rooms are being assigned there because um, because they have been, they have given us permission to assign them. So these are individuals who, based on their, um, where they were in line, um, based on, on where they were as far as being in the next person to receive a room, these persons were contacted through by housing to say, hey, um, are you interested in you know, having a, a double room, are you interested in having a roommate? We noticed that, you know, you put this person down or didn't put this person down. So all of the individuals right now who are in any kind of double occupancy room in the traditional halls, they have told us that they want to be in those spaces because we were in essence running out 
of um, the single occupancy rooms. And so just going in line, that's what has happened. So for the double occupancy rooms, these persons will have a shared bath or shared bedroom with one other resident. They may have a private bathroom, depending on how that room was initially designed. Um, I think some of the triples may have had private bathrooms, or they may have a shared bathroom where it, it may be two people sharing a bathroom with either one other person on the other side or two people on the other side. As Dr. Bullitt already mentioned, the gardens and Suno, uh, the gardens has a, a double, triple, um, and Suno will have doubles and quads. So those rooms will remain the same. The structure will remain the same. All right. Um, this is all the before you move in stuff. So for those of you who are returners, you all know this. You know what you have to do as far as making sure that you get all your clearances done um, from you know, student health and wellness, financial aid, business and finance. Um, Ms. Denise Belma was on our call a few days ago and she they financial aid. Um, they are taking app, um, appointments, so if you need to talk to someone, go ahead and reach out to your financial aid officer and get on their schedule. They are taking appointments to make sure everyone uh, has their information together so everyone can be clear when you get here. Um, now, this is just for our, our uh, new students. There is going to be an early drop-off option for you all, um, Friday, August 7th through August 9th. Um, and as you can see here, we're going to send you information on, on, on July 27th, where students can sign up to, um, for a one hour period where they can come and drop off their items. Um, this option is not being offered to our returners because we're extending the, um, the move-in days for our returners. So you all, instead of you all only having one day to move in, we're extending the move-in days. So you will have an opportunity to come in early um, and move in. So that's why that's not being offered for returners. Um, and also because just from a staffing perspective, we won't be able to do a early drop-off for everyone. But we have many other accommodations for the returners to be able to be able to socially distance and uh, have the time to get all their all their items moved in safely. So um, on move in day, this is for our, our new students. This actually the times have changed, you guys. So as Dr. Bullitt said, sometimes we can send something out and then something will change. So right now um, we're saying it's three to nine on the Tuesday the 11th and eight to two on Wednesday, but more than likely, um, by the end of the day today, this is going to change to where both of these days will be uh, move in will be 7 a.m. to 3 p.m on both Tuesday and Wednesday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, the university is um, employing what we're calling a U plus two system of move-in. So you and two other persons will be allowed to come inside the residence halls. Um, if your family is traveling with more than uh, three total persons, you being included in the three, then you all will need to kind of plan for how you're going to accommodate those additional persons, whether they, you know, stay at the hotel or if they are able to come on campus that they're sitting out on the oaks or you know finding somewhere to go but we will strictly enforce only you plus two inside of the residence halls okay um, you can check out the packing list uh, we're going to update that packing list considering some of the COVID-19 um, considerations so but you can go ahead and view the packing list keeping in mind that we have a short semester we're going to be ending in November so you don't have to bring everything in the kitchen sink. So bring your essentials and bring what you need. Um, this is a re reminder for um, you know, returners and for new students, talk to your parents about their homeowner's insurance to see if their homeowner's insurance can cover you and your items while you're here. If that does not happen, we have Grad Guard, which is our um, uh, insurance policy for renters. It's only about $100 to $150 for the whole year, but it gives you up to $10,000 worth of coverage. So you may want to consider that, um, as well as consider making sure you submit and have um, reliable information on your emergency plan in the event that when we get into hurricane season and we have to be in a position of um, having to evacuate, we more than likely will have to have you all to utilize your emergency plan um, because right now, considering all of the um, public health situations, we don't know what evacuation may look like if and when we have to do that. 
All right, and um, real quick, just so you all know, there are some new policies that's gonna be in place inside the residence halls. Um, we have done some things though. Our facilities team have done a lot to, you know, make our halls safe um, and to comply with uh, um, sanitation guidelines. But as already has been mentioned, masks will be required in common spaces. Um, the lounges will be used only on a reserved only basis so folks can't congregate inside the lounges. Um, there will be no guests allowed this year. So what we mean by guests is someone who does not have a housing contract with Dillard University. So if you're not an assigned resident at Dillard University, you're considered a guest. So there will be no guests allowed inside of the residence halls, that's including the um, apartments. Visitation will be allowed. A visitor is someone who has, um, who has an assignment. However, visitation will be restricted to only those persons in your hall. So for example, if you live in Williams Hall, you can visit with other residents in Williams Hall. However, you cannot visit with residents in Strait, Camphor, Hartzell, or the Gardens, or vice versa. Um, there is one visitor per resident. So again, if you are in one of those double rooms, only if two of you are in the room at that time, you only can have one other guest in there. The guests must wear, everyone must have on masks when they're a guest. And for those of you all who are gonna be at SUNO, I just wanna let you know, at SUNO, um, visitation will only be allowed in your personal bedroom. So you can't have visitors come in and y'all hang out in the living room or the kitchen or the common area. You have to have your guests in your room and um, they must wear masks. And with regard to SUNO, um, there will be no guests allowed coming to SUNO. So it used to be a time where, you know, you just kind of come through, um, you'll get stopped by the police there and you know, say, I'm going to visit so-and-so or what have you. They will not allow anyone who is not a resident at SUNO to come on. So just know that that's going to be something that's going to happen in the coming um, year. And um, finally, new protocols are going to be in place. These are going to be in, this is in your residential life guide. Um, the public health crisis policy is really simply saying if and when um, we need to change courses, if things, if there's a public health crisis, even in the current one we're in, where if the CDC or our, our state or city government says, hey, we have to pull back, we have to close down, we have to do certain things, Dilla is going to do what we have to do to be in alignment with that. And so that means whatever is in our current policy right now may change. And so when that change, we're gonna let you know, but understand when we make those changes, it's expected that you all will be in compliance. And if not, then you know that will put you in jeopardy of losing your, your housing. Um, the health and safety policy has always been in place. That is in the code of conduct, but we're, you know, really and truly, this is gonna um, be strongly enforced this year. So this is how it's written in the code of conduct, however, Going back to what Dr. Buller was saying about folks gathering, having kickbacks, having parties, not wearing masks, you know, that is a health and safety violation. And that will be um, a code of conduct violation as well as put you in jeopardy. Um, and finally, the health and wellness responsibility statement or policy, meaning that if you, it's one thing to, to be asymptomatic. You know, and we know many persons, particularly persons in your age group, are asymptomatic. And even though you're asymptomatic, you can still be carrying the virus and spreading the virus and not know it. But for those who are experiencing symptoms, um, and the symptoms, if you didn't don't know, are going to be widely um, distributed and around the halls. If you're experiencing symptoms and you fail to um, take measures to see about yourself, or if you do get tested and you know that you um, are carrying the virus and you don't take the measures to get um, quarantined or, or isolate yourself from, you know, the campus, then there will be um, zero tolerance for that, and that will end up in also in judicial and or termination of housing. So it's going to be very important that you all self-govern, um, that you change kind of the culture that you have around, you know, um, gatherings and, and, you know, personal hygiene, sanitation. Um, it's going to be very important because while there's some things we can govern, but it's some things we can't govern. And so we really need you all to be able to govern yourself. And that is it. Um, fed through that as quick as I could, but um, I just think it was important for you all to see that and know kind of where we are with housing and what we're doing. That's all I 
All right. Thanks, Dr. Saylor. I really appreciate that. Um, again, if you all saw the um, emails there, please contact uh, Dr. Saylor and her team with regard to residential life. Any questions that you have around that? Y'all, we're going to do our best to make sure that you're the place where you are, that you are comfortable. We'll do our best. But this fall, we're going to need everybody just to be as flexible as we possibly can be. Um, and I know that um, that you have uh, more questions about that, and you certainly can follow up. Um, Ms. Yolanda, I, could you just could you just talk briefly about um, you know what kinds of things are happening in Kearney Hall and kind of what the fall will look like? I know we're running short on time, but I did want to just see if you could touch base with us on that. Sure, Dr. Bullard. Really, flexibility is a good segue into dining, and that's what we're looking into doing um, for the fall semester. First, starting off with the uh, staff and employees, requiring them to wear PPE and self-monitor, self-health check before they come into work. Um, I think with the university adding the temperature checks um, prior to um, staff coming in on campus, that's a great add. Um, but for the most part, we're focusing on safety dining safe for others so when students enter into the dining hall masks will be required at when they're in the servery er areas but when they, they are dining in the dining hall you know at that point masks will be removed but for the most part all areas all platforms will be open open in kearney dining hall um but we are serving everything so no self-serve stations um, we've also added a Kearney to go location, which will be located in Kearney Lounge, which will allow students to have the flexibility to pick up food and go a uh, hot meal if they don't um, want to dine in Kearney. We've also added a um, pick three or pick four option to the simply to go locations, which students can use their meal plan swipes to dine at the retail location. So again, we're focusing on the flexibility. We have also extending, extended the dining hours for dinner to accommodate the academic class schedule. So we're looking at extending the dining hours for Kearney Dining Hall, possibly not closing between breakfast and lunch, which will allow um, students to have enough time to dine um, in the dining hall. We are practicing social distance. Um, in the dining hall. So um, in addition to that, we have updated um, the technology at the POS systems at the registers, which will allow students to tap and go. For our continuing students, most of you know Miss Elaine um, and are, is very, very familiar with her, but instead of Miss Elaine taking your card, um, you will be able to just tap your card um, on the new scanner that will be located at all registers. Um, in, in, in addition to that, I think um, the hours of operation that students will be given, the flexibility um, with the hours is very important to ensure that we keep safe distance during our peak times. Um, there was one question, Dr. Bullard, around meal plans, commuter meal plans. Um, that I would like to answer at this time as well. Um, Michelle's office or the Office of, Auxil of Auxiliary Services will be sending a link to all students that is interested in purchasing the voluntary meal plan. Um, the cost um, will be on that form. Um, the meals or the meal plan do ro roll over from fall to spring semester, but they do not roll over from year to year. Um, there are a number of plans. Some include um, resident dining swipes with Blue Devil Dollars, which will allow you the flexibility um, to purchase meal from the retail operations. Um, so you should be receiving that information within the next two weeks. Um, Michelle, is there anything you would like to add around the meal plan, the voluntary meal plan option? No, not at the moment. Just know that we'll send that email to clarify more on what the actual options are and what you all are able to pick out as far as your classification on which meal plan you're eligible for. Okay. 
Um, and again, um, we are, you know, our goal right now is keeping you safe and remaining flexible during this time of COVID. So in resident dining, I know um, in normal circumstances, food is not allowed for takeout, but food will be allowed. Um, students will be allowed to take out food out of the dining hall um, if they prefer as well. So um, if you have any questions at any point, feel free to email me at um, yholland at dilla.edu. So that's y-h-o-l-l-a-n-d at dilla.edu. Good stuff. Um, one of the things I want to make sure folks knew about is um, our some of our services. Um, we certainly will continue to have access for uh, mental health for our um, academic support services, the labs, all of those pieces as well. However, I did want to um, uh, uh, allow Dr. Jonathan Wright to uh, hop on and just give us a, a, a quick synopsis of kind of how things will work in career and professional development, just so students have a sense about that. Thank you, Dr. Bullard. Hi, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well. Stay safe, Blue Devils. Your career pathway has not stopped because of COVID-19. It has not stopped because of what's going on with your return to campus. Although you may be in a virtual capacity, meaning if you just elect to decide not to come back to campus and do things uh, from home, that's fine. You can still access career services and I wanna be able to tell you how. It is very important for every student to engage their Handshake account. It's important that you not only claim your profile, but you complete your profile in its entirety. You will now be able to access all of Handshake's events, all of the career services events that we'll be having in the fall. You can have access to those through Blue Connect. If you're on your Handshake, and I'm encouraging all students to again, claim your profile, complete your profile in its entirety, use Handshake. All of our events are going to be virtual. So therefore, for if you are a returning junior, senior, and you're interested in going to graduate and professional schools, we are still having the gap spare. It will be virtual and it will be used, the platform will be on Handshake. That's why, again, I am encouraging you all to <clears throat> engage with Handshake. We're also hosting the first ever. This is a great opportunity. If you're interested in getting an internship, full-time job opportunity, this is the first ever uh, Career Expo, HBC Career Expo, that will only be for Xavier, Suno, and Dillard students. So this gives employers an opportunity to engage our students, particularly now in this culture, employers are really trying to stress diversity, equity, and inclusion. They are actively recruiting minority underrepresented population. This means you. This gives you an opportunity to engage employers. We're expecting over 60 employers and they are actively registering. You can get on Handshake and see what employers are coming. We'll be sending out information. But as it pertains to your career and professional development, I wanna quickly share, and I know that I'm up against the time. I wanna quickly share with each of you, we are having virtual events and this is your schedule of those events for both September and October. And we are having these events at very times so that students are able to access these events. That means rock your resume, drop in advisement, any of these kinds of things we are having. And these are gonna be on our website. We are currently updating our website. So you can have links to actually go to our website, any of these events, you can click on them. That's one way. Number two, you can go through Blue Connect and you can connect that way. Number three, if you're using your Handshake account, you can connect that way. Number four, you can still schedule appointments with Ms. Cockrell and myself using Handshake for career coaching, resume, grad school. All of our services are still available. Now, once we start back school, <clears throat> you are still able to 
Hold on. Once we start stop the share, once school does start back, you're still able to schedule appointments. You can still come into the career center. We can only have a maximum of five students in the career center at a time. We will be practicing social distancing. We will ask you to sign in so that we can establish our uh, contact tracing protocol, but you can still get your mock interviews. You can still work your career pathway. So I'm encouraging each of you Dial in now. Now is the time to dial in. If you have specific questions, always email myself, jwright at diller.edu, or Ms. Cockrell, J-C-O-C-K-R-E-L-L -L at diller.edu. We are always available to assist you. Please reach out, stay in touch, and access your Handshake account. Thank you. I take any questions that any student or anyone may have. Thanks, Dr. Wright. I really appreciate that. Um, Ms. Michelle, um, I just wanted to um, I, I'll provide you the opportunity around um, any transportation conversations, bookstore IDs, anything like that, that students would want to be updated about. Sure. Thanks, Dr. Bullard. Um, I think everybody, can you guys hear me? Okay. So I think everybody has gotten the first set of emails from me. You'll get a series of them. I'm also in a group with DU24, so you guys know you'll get the updates, right, my angels? I'm going to send you all of those weekly updates um, on the services that we handle, which will be ID cards, which we've started, post office. So if you have any questions, hit me up in the group. Um, the laundry machines also fall under us. I noticed, Dr. Saylor, your presentation has them as, as card operated, but they're actually mobile um, app operated. We do have cards for those that have any connection issues, but you guys can hit me up and again, I will send out um, a separate email once a week on those different services. The snack machines and the drink machines, all that fall under me. Um, and the bookstore. So if you have any questions on the um, Include App program where the books are digital and online, if you have any questions on those and how to access that, order anything from the bookstore online, you'll get, again, a notice each week on those things. But you all have my contact information from previous emails. So feel free to email me. And last but not least, those of you that are at SUNO, I am also um, charged with taking care of transportation. So we will have a schedule and it, does, it will be sent to you as well to let you know what time the um, shuttle will be operating. The only thing I need y'all to do is be mindful of your schedule and how you uh, schedule your day, like Dr. Bullard mentioned earlier, don't try and hop on the 930 shuttle for a 930 class. Um, be responsible. And again, if you have any questions, you can give me a call and I'll sum it back up in those emails. Welcome. All right. Last but not least, Dr. Courtney, anything that you want to share from student engagement and leadership? Sure. Um, good morning, y'all. And again, we're trying to answer all your questions in the chat. I think we've gotten to most of them. The ones that we didn't get to, we do have a list, so we will follow up. So don't be alarmed if um, you did not see or hear something. And we'll also provide this afterwards. Uh, the two questions that we got for student life uh, were one about commuter life. So yes, we will absolutely have commuter programs and events this year. So uh, we'll have a schedule of that coming out soon. If you have ideas or things that you want to do as a commuter student, please feel free to um, send me an email at studentengagement at diller.edu. And we are happy to cater to uh, your needs and wants as a commuter student, but there will absolutely be things for you to do. There'll be places for you to hang out on campus in between classes and all of that. And the other question that we got about student life is, will we kind of have a phased approach? So right now we have certain guidelines in place, but if the city um, lines up on their things, will we do the same? And the short answer is, it really just depends on where we are and the guidance that we're receiving from the CDC as well as the city. But 
Uh, we will have a lot of virtual options for you all and we'll have to just really take it day by day. So this pandemic is new for all of us and we are learning about things together. Um, if you do have specific questions or concerns or ideas, feel free to shoot those to me at studentengagement at dealer.edu. A few of y'all have texted me while we've been online. So we're really happy to engage in these conversations. And uh, again, we'll continue to do these webinars each week. So um, if you do have questions before any of the webinars, you can always email them to me. I'll send them to the panelists before we begin so they'll be prepared to answer. Okay, um, how are we doing on questions? Do we feel Uh, I believe we are good on questions. Pretty much everything has been answered. Uh, there's a few more questions about residential life that are asking very specific things. So you all please email housing at dealer.edu, but also um, they will be sending emails out. So um, just give them a little bit of time. So like Dr. Saylor said, and like Dr. Buller said, they have been preparing housing assignments and they're communicating that with you all. So it's kind of one step at a time. So after that, then you will receive instructions on how to move in and all the details and if it will, it will be staggered and everything like that. So it is coming very soon, likely within the next week. I am, as you all are talking, I've been going in and answering questions on the chat too. So um, if there are specifics, I've been trying to get through them as quickly as possible. There, there is one question um, in regards to laundry in the gardens. Michelle, um, uh, one of the questions is how is laundry? Okay. I'm typing the answer. All right. Dr. Courtney, the, there's a couple questions in about things like um, student organizations and, and home homecoming. I see. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, we will be hosting a session for student organizations uh, in the beginning of August to talk to you all about the new procedures. So how will programming work? How do you check people in? What does the process look like on Blue Connect? How do you start a new organization? And all of those things. So uh, that will be coming out to you soon. As you know, if you're a student organization leader, right now we've been uh, processing all your registrations. Pretty soon you have information about the training. And then after that, we'll have the webinar about procedures. So again, things are kind of changing day by day. So we're hoping to kind of do it all at once versus telling you something right now and then having to change it. Um, also about homecoming. So as of right now, we will not be having homecoming in the fall semester. We will uh, have something else planned for you that we'll tell you about soon. DAB has been coming up with an alternative. We are looking at potentially moving that to the spring, but again, everything will depend on how we're doing. So hopefully the city and the state are doing well and we're doing well on campus and we can offer it in the spring, but it will all depend on how we do in the fall. Okay. All right. Um, I was just gonna make just some closing, real quick uh, closing comments and then we will, we will go and we will have a, um, we will be able to uh, send out this recording. Is that, is that possible? Yes, we, we will send it out. So basically we'll send a recap email and then each week when we send you the reminder to sign up, we'll have a link to the previous week's webinar. Awesome, awesome. Okay, um, I just wanted to say that, uh, first of all, again, I just let you, I wanna let you all know and let on behalf of all of us, and we're just so proud of you all for continuing your education. Um, you know, it's really easy uh, during this time frame to say, you know what, that's that's going to take too much to do. I'm not going to um, I'm not going to continue on. Uh, I'm going to do something else. Um, we're proud of you for continuing, and we know that this is not the, the circumstances that you would have foreseen for yourselves. But I want you to to keep pressing forward. Um, that being said. I do want to ask you to start thinking about yourself. Um, we have about 30 days until we start school. And so in this time frame, I want you to think about uh, what it means to reinvent yourself as it relates to um, what it means to reinvent yourself as it relates to all facets of your life, whether it's 
um, the way that you um, handle your own time management, um, your personal finances, um, how you interact with people, how you take uh, control of your um, education. If your grades weren't as great as you wanted them to be, start to set personal goals for yourself. And during this time, this is a really good time to stop and breathe and think about what that looks like. And so we're going to continue to encourage you around, uh, encourage you around that. You all may have noticed from the academic schedule that on Fridays, we will not have classes. And a lot of people are going, great, I have a long weekend. Um, that's not really the way that we are hoping you will receive that. Um, what we're hoping you'll say is, is I'm going to take the opportunity to take advantage of the enrichment sessions that will be available. And so a lot of the things that we've always wanted to talk about, whether it's financial literacy or um, leadership programming uh, out of Dr. Courtney's office. Dr. Saylor may do something for women on those particular days. Um, Ms. Michelle may start talking to us more about um, how it is we take advantage of and start doing entrepreneurial kinds of things um, through the um, auxiliary services spaces. All of those conversations, Dr. Wright, uh, about um, career and professional development. And so those days are days where we, we're going to want you to start thinking about what it means to be um, a student after Dillard, so life after Dillard. That's what we're wanting you to think about. And so we'll expand that concept of life after Dillard on those particular days. And so I really do want you all to come into this fall with a plan, okay? A growth mindset, if you, if you will, um, because I really do think that that will help us to get through this. Um, somebody asked about the spring. The reason we haven't put out anything for the spring is because we don't know. We just don't know um, what's gonna happen come springtime. And so what we're gonna try to do is just get into school this semester, do all the things we need to do to stay here. Um, we will um, finish up right at, at that Tuesday or Wednesday, right before Thanksgiving. We'll do our exams. And then I think we'll probably will do a later start in the spring, just kind of sidestep uh, flu season. Uh, but that's sort of the high level plan as of today. So um, that being said, I just want to thank our uh, panelists. Panelists, anything that I missed that you want to say real quickly before I close it out? All right. Um, Reverend Brisbane sends his best. Um, he had to uh, uh, participate in a function on campus, uh, but was not able to make it. He will be here on next time and uh, will seek to um, welcome those of you all, especially those of you all who did not get the opportunity to meet him as of yet. Okay. All right, everybody. Be well. Thanks again, uh, panelists. And thanks again, students, for being a part of this. We will do this every Friday until you tell us to, uh, to shut it down. So have a good uh, rest of your summer and we will see you soon. Thank you. Thanks so much.